let's move on with our function y equals to e to the power of minus x square and here is a very interesting question related to the same if a rectangle has its base on the x-axis and two vertices on the curve y equals to e to the power of minus x square show that the rectangle has the largest possible area when the two vertices are at the point of inflection of the curve. Now in one of the videos we found that point of inflection for this curve is at x equals to plus minus 1 over square root 2 and that's why I've written this value here. Now let's solve this question. Now to find the maximum area what do we need to do? We need to find the first derivative and then test for maximum or minimum right after we get the critical point. So we have a function which is y equals to e to the power of minus x square. Now let us assume that there is a point x on this function. So if we have x as a point, the y value is going to be e to the power of minus x square. Correct? That is going to be the y point. Now let me also sketch the function which we analyzed earlier. So the sketch of the function, if you remember, is kind of like this. Now, this sketch is actually helpful for you to analyze the situation or to understand the situation, but it is not a must to know, right? So the curve y equals to e to the power of minus x square is kind of like this. Now, we have already sketched this curve in one of the videos since we are analyzing this particular function, right? So we have done all required to sketch the curve. So we know this is the curve, right? Now this curve is not necessary to draw, but I'm only sketching it here so that it gives you an idea of what we are trying to do. Let's read the question once again and relate it with the curve. If a rectangle has its base on x-axis and two vertices on this curve show that the rectangle has largest possible area when two vertices are at the point of inflection of the curve. So, so basically we are saying that if we make a rectangle inside touching the two vertices touching the curve, then the area rectangle makes with the x-axis, right? So this is the area of the rectangle with the x-axis. That area is maximum if those points happen to be on point of inflection. That is the question, right? So what we will do is, we really don't know what that those points are. So we'll assume, let the point be any general point x and y, correct? So that is how we're going to start and then find what those points are. So if my point is x, right, then y value of this will be e to the power of minus x squared, correct? Now, if this point is x, then the other point will be minus x, correct? Now, this function is e1. It is symmetric about y-axis, correct? And so, these points will be mirror images. So, what we will do in further analysis, we will only analyze one point and assume that to be symmetric, right? Now, from this curve, what is the area of rectangle? The area of rectangle will be length into width. Now the length is from minus x to x, which is 2x. And the width is y value. y value is e to the power of minus x square. So we have e to the power of minus x square. So that is the area. Now this area is a function of x. So we can find derivative with respect to x on both sides. So we say dA over dx is equals to, now we can apply the product rule. Derivative of the first function is 2 times the second function e to the power of minus x square plus first function 2x. Derivative of the next function which is e to the power of minus x square times minus 2x. So that becomes dA over dx. Now we can simplify these two factors by taking 2 e to the power of minus x square common. So if I do that, I get 1 for the first term and here I've already taken this 2 and e to the power of minus x squared and left with this x, this x and minus 2. So I get minus 2x squared. So that's my next factor. Now to find a critical point, 
dA over dx should be 0. So it is equal to 0 when this is what we'll try to figure out. When this factor should be 0, right? 2x squared. Now these are the two factors. Now to find zeros, either one of them could be 0, right? So we'll try to analyze this on the right side. Now the first part can never be 0, right? It, even if x is very large, it only approaches 0. But the next part could be 0. So yes, we do have a solution. And then we have 1 minus 2x squared equals to 0. That could be solved. Now this is 0 at what point? So when we solve for it, we get we can take 2x squared equals to 1 or x is equals to plus minus square root of 1 over 2. Okay. So you divide by 2 then to square root and you get two points. So we have two critical points. Correct. So the critical points for us are so let's say critical number is when dA dx equals to 0. Correct. dA over dx equals to 0 and we found that to be at x equals to plus minus 1 over square root 2. That's what we found. Now let us find at this critical number do we have really a maximum minimum or neither right. So that part we'll do now. So I'll just analyze first part which is a positive part and then we'll, we'll do we know from symmetry let's find at least one point. So we'll just check the point at x equals to plus 1 over square root 2. So we have two critical numbers. One is here, which is minus 1 over square root 2. So let's analyze this part. So here we do have a 0. That is our first derivative. Now, we take a test point on either side of this. So if I take a point which is less than 1 over square root 2. 1 over square root 2 is kind of 0 0.7, right? So if I take a point which is less than this, let us say 0 0.5 and a point on the right of it, which is say plus 1, then what happens to dA over dx? So we'll analyze dA over dx on either side of 1 over square root 2. Now the equation is, let's write dA over dx is equals to what? Let me just repeat this here. So we get 2 e to the power of minus x squared times 1 minus 2x squared, correct? So from here, if I put 1 here for x, correct, a point beyond 1 over square root 2, that means in the interval from here to plus infinity, in that case, it becomes negative. Do you see that? It becomes negative. So it is negative here. But if I have a value here, which is, let's say, 0 0.5, correct, then 1 minus 1 over half is going to be positive. So here it is going to be positive. So as you can see in this particular case, the rate of change of area is positive be before this and negative beyond this. So we do have a maximum at x equals to 1 over square root 2. Do you get my point? Similarly, you can analyze this point also, right? Exactly same analysis you can do for this point. So you'll get the same answer. Now anyway, so we get maximum at 1 over square root 2. So we found that maximum area under this curve is possible when the vertices of the triangle are at plus minus x equals to plus minus 1 over 2. Correct? So we get our answer and that is at x equals to plus minus 1 over square root 2, we get maximum area of the rectangle. Now the second part of this which is actually a very important part is show that the rectangle has largest possible area when the two vertices are at the point of inflection. Now whether this is a point of inflection or not that we have already covered in another video. So look into that so you'll know this is indeed a point of inflection and what we found is that this is the point of inflection is at plus minus 1 over square root 2 for x. Right. So combining these two videos, now you know that point of inflection is actually the point on which the rectangle's vertices should be for the maximum area. Right. So combine the two 
Sorry for the inconvenience, but I hope you get the concept. Thank you and all the best.